All right. Thank you for watching the Matt Black Show. I hope everybody's enjoying all the past videos. Make sure you check it out there on the uh, YouTube. Just if you look at the YouTube, make sure you put no spaces in there and then just search the Matt Black Show with no spaces. It'll bring you right to the channel. Uh, before watching, please be advised, there might be some rude language or some stories that might not be fit for children, so thank you for that. And um, uh, it's a 30-minute interview, a one-hour set, 20 minutes of the interview is serious, 10 minutes of it is crazy questions. So I hope you're ready for that. And uh, make sure you check out the fan page as well on Facebook, The Matt Black Show. Just check that out. You can put the spaces in there, and you can see all the upcoming events as well. It's uh, we're getting some really, really badass DJs in here. All the past ones are really badass. Having some come back, back and forth, front and back. Get it, get it. That's what I'm talking about. So I hope everybody's ready for the Matt Black Show. And here we go. Boom. All right. Once again, thank you for watching the Matt Black Show. Let's go ahead and get into this DJ's mind. P-Funk. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. P -funk. Hell yeah, brother. Welcome to the show. I hope you... Uh, Hope you're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Let's see here. Tell everybody about yourself and uh, where you're from. Uh, my name is Paul. I live in a small mountain town called Dahlonega. Uh -huh. Dahlonega, Georgia. It's probably about an hour away from here. <laughs> um, there's not much really good stuff to say about it. I don't even like admitting that I'm from there. So <laughs> we'll just, on to the next question. All right. <laughs> I guess you could ride like four wheelers or something in there, huh? Yeah, it is fun. You know, actually, I go hiking, and I go canoeing, and that's really about the best stuff there is to do out there. <laughs> cool. All right. We'll go to the next question here. So what kind of music do you play, or you prefer to play? Um, right now, I play a lot of mid-tempo stuff, uh, ghetto funk, some mid-tempo bass, a little bit of moon baton, but I also love to play drum and bass and some dubstep and glitch hop. Um, really, anything that has good bass, I like, so I try not to be... Um, I'm not really stuck with any one genre. Uh -huh. My set is mostly mid-tempo stuff. It's probably what I'm going to play tonight. Okay. But uh, I play, I'd like to say I play everything except for like happy hardcore and trance. Cool. I see that you have your computer here. A lot of people, you have to know this. I mean, a lot of people do hate on people that just use computers, but you said that you actually started on vinyl? Yes, I actually did. I started on vinyl over 10 years ago. So um, and I quit DJing for a while when I had a daughter, and then I got back to DJing. I bought software, and I like it so much better. You can't scratch, but um, I don't mind pressing the sync button. You can concentrate on your mixing, you know? Yeah. You don't got to sit there and pull a pitch fader for five and a half minutes. <laughs> oh, it doesn't take that long, but, I mean, I, okay. I don't mind the progression, the digital so stuff. You I miss blend. my vinyl, but um, that software is cool. I don't yeah. mind it. So, so you do blend, and you do use uh, a little bit of pitch control every now and then, right? Oh yeah, I mix them um, properly and everything, and uh, all that good DJ stuff. So you're not you're not fully using just the sync button and just riding out a whole track, right? No, I mix them and sequence them at the right time. I use the looping functions on it, you know. I might throw some effects on it, cool. and I go through tracks pretty quick because um, with not having to use a pitch fader, you can sync the pitch lock. What uh, on what, that you can move through tracks faster. What Keep program it. do you use? If you mind, I use Tractor Pro. Oh, I love that. I use I have a Tractor S4. I, li I like that one. That's a yeah. good setup. I need to get Tractor, uh, was it Tractor Two or Pro Two or something. But uh, yeah, the Two's good. I haven't as, seen that. It's like yet. half the price of the the Big Dad. Isn't that what yours? With? Didn't yours come with that? Because yours is a different version than mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Tractor similar Pro to two, two, yeah, I guess. It actually, it works with uh, the Tractor Pro, but you got to buy a patch for it and stuff. But it works out great, man. Cool. So, uh, what do you have in store for everybody tonight? Um. Bunch of funky ass beats, okay. um, big bass lines, um, you'll have hip hop vocals and just different vocal samples, um, all mid tempo, mostly ghetto funk, some mid tempo bass. Um, we'll, I might change it up, we'll see where it goes. Well, good, some ghetto funk. I know we're yeah, we're going to uh, start about, what is it, 104 BPM? We'll see what happens from there. I know the dancing lady we have in the bag. <laughs> and the other guests, I'll probably get into it. The ghetto funk, always, the ladies always like that. That's cool. <laughs> so, um, how long have you been DJing? You said, what, about 10 years? Um, it was 2000, 2001. I know it's over 10 years now, so I can just say, hey, it's been over 10 years. I, I couldn't tell you, know, that it's been 10 years, 12 months, 14 days, or whatever. <laughs> can't remember. I, mean, I was born a, at nighttime, no? <laughs> I mean, there was time messing with tables years before that, but I don't count that as when I started DJing, you know? It's really when I started buying vinyl, I guess, yeah. is when I consider myself a DJ. It's like I bought some turntables, I had some vinyl, I was like, hey, I'm a DJ now, look at me, you know? When I first started, I couldn't even mix worth a shit, but I was like, I'm awesome, you know? <laughs> yeah, it always takes a little time to learn there. When you, when you first learned, what was the equipment that you learned on? 
Um, I had a pair of Tech 1200s, which was excellent for learning. Yeah. Um, glad I didn't have to start with anything else for turntables. And then I had this little tiny, I believe it was a Newmark. It was like a little um, little mixer. I had a crossfader, two levels, and high and low equalizer, and a little headphone switch. It was the most simplest little mixer you could get. That's cool, though. I, it, I always I always like DJs. They start with little simple, simple things, you know, not always like the best equipment out there, so that way they can usually learn off of it, you know, and get more of a feel for it. That's cool, man. Hell yeah. Well, mad respect to you. You've been DJing pretty long there. Uh, yeah, I guess so. You know, I can't wait till long I enough to say you. I think I know what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> I got a little confidence. I can't wait till I ask you one of your most wild DJ stories. That's gonna be interesting. I have some funny ones. <laughs> uh, do you have any mentors that you look up to? Oh gosh, um, I don't really know. I mean, my dad, I guess, would be one. A <laughs> mentor, some that I admire. Um, How about DJs? DJs that are like a mentor. What's your dad's a DJ. I mean, is it running the family? No, no, no. <laughs> um, I don't know DJs that I look up to. Um, I remember when I was a kid, obviously, when I, when I first started drumming, um, spinning, I was playing drum and bass, and I really liked Diesel Boy, and uh, him and him, Dara, and AK, a lot of the U.S. drum and bass DJs that were bringing it at the time, and still are. Um, basically, anyone who was doing good drum and bass, you know, yeah. I was really looking up to. And now... Um, all types of DJs. I mean, I could make a long list, but we don't have to go there. I mean, <laughs> I there's, there's, the there's so many good DJs that I let shout out. I can like, list like a hundred of them, you know, and producers. And, <laughs> but you all rock. And if you're awesome and you rock, then shout outs to you. I can definitely tell you where the area you came from. You're talking about Diesel Boy and Dara and, and AK-1200 and all of them. You know, those are the... I just, I'd go nuts whenever they came. I had to go to that show. Yeah. I think there's a party coming up here, too, pretty soon. I don't know who's throwing it, no. Can't really throw any plugins out there. I didn't talk to him, but uh, I think Diesel Boy will be in Atlanta here soon. So I saw. I, I wouldn't doubt that. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since he's been back, so should be cool. I, I guess he's due again. You know. Yeah. <laughs> His time I, I, is twelve hundred was great um, last Friday, though. I saw him. I was excited about that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's badass. Why the hell I miss that shit? Damn, growing up having kids. Damn it. <laughs> that's awesome. So, um. So what's the basically the uh the reason behind your DJ name? Um a, a buddy of mine, good buddy and I. His name is Curtis. Uh, shout out to Curtis. I'm sure I'll make him watch this at some point. <laughs> Especially since he got a ca- shout out. Um what was a nickname he gave me at one point years ago and uh as I said I'll be P Funk. <laughs> I, remember that. I couldn't think of anything. I, like, DJ names are so sort of stupid. I just want to be like Paul or DJ Paul, you know. But yeah. I think like Three Six Mafia's DJ guy will sue me or something. I can't beat <laughs> someone already like copy wrote that name, you know. <laughs> so, oh, good. That's a lot simpler than I thought. I didn't know if like he had been having sex or something, and the girl's like, "You're funky," and you're like, "Oh, damn, it's a great name," you know. <laughs> like I'm P funky. <laughs> yeah. My P is funk, you know. <laughs> I don't know about that. No. Just fuck it. <laughs> That's awesome. Now I like it, brother. All right. Let's keep on going here. Let's see here. Maybe, um, let's see here. Was there anything uh, crazy you used to do before DJing? You know, maybe uh, teaching people how to uh, impregnate women? Um, no, I, I'd like to brag and say I was, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I guess I was like 20 when, or 19, 20 when I started. I think 20. And before that, I was running around trying to score alcohol, you know, and party. Yeah. <laughs> that was your, I was ju- I was already out of high school and I uh, just running around partying. That was it, you know. I'm just trying to have fun. I'm young and being crazy. You play any sports or? Um, I did. I I ran cross country. I used to mountain bike a lot. I still do mountain bike some here and there. Not enough. Um, played soccer for a little while. Did you go to college for anything besides uh what you're doing now? No, like, I college don't play at all. Sport. I go to, I go to college. Yes. Okay. I go to North Georgia College and State University. Um, shout out to my awesome yeah. school. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah i go to school there i'm a senior i'll graduate next year and i'll be nice to get it over with from your point of view what do you think is cheating um when it comes to djing um everyone's like the sync button but i can't say that because i you know i use the sync button honestly so so i'm gonna go ahead and harp on david Guetta for this one for the pre-recorded mixes yeah yeah that's fine. cheating go for it yeah you know he brought it to a new low it's okay to press a sync button as long as you're not Playing like pre-recorded mixes where you use the sync button, <laughs> then then it's wrong. <laughs> what about your uh, positives and negatives of the scene today? Um, negatives, um, haters, I guess. Um, can I mean, be compared hating, to the past. Compared to the past, um, 
Um, it's different. Um, the women now, they don't wear UFOs. They wear those little pants with your ass hanging out at the parties. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a bunch of little strippers running around at the shows now. So there's, always, <laughs> there's so much eye candy. They used to cover it up with these UFOs that were like 15 feet wide. But, um, yeah, um, all the girls that come out dressed with their asses hanging out, thank you, you know? I mean, I, I'm watching at the party. Don't think I'm not looking. I mean, <laughs> don't think anybody's not. It's a motivator, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's the only reason I go any days. I'm not there for the music or, you know, the drinks. I'm... <laughs> It's for the girls with their ass hanging out. That's really it. Yeah. Now, I always look at it. DJs, sex, wildness, get crazy, don't see straight. That's what life's about, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that is awesome. Okay, now, apparently, Simon Cow is getting some DJ show out there. All right. What do you think? What is your thoughts about that? Um, I'm going to say this first. I mean, I think that... I mean, what what the hell is he gonna do? I mean, he's going to put DJs up there and say, "Hey, you suck." What's I mean, him and Paul Abdul, they've never touched a record in their life. What are they gonna say? Oh, you suck. Well, well, let's see you come up here and do better. I mean, I mean, like DJ Craze, you call that scratching? You know, yeah. it was fucking terrible. <laughs> like all I know is that uh, a turntablist with some DMC skills had better win. You yeah. know, like if you're up there, you're just mixing. Whoop de do. We could all mix. It's a sync button nowadays. You got to do some scratching and turntablism. Show like real DJ skills. But I think if I entered and just played a bunch of like techno and just I could probably win if I just yeah. look cool, because it'll be like someone like Pauly D will probably win that. I mean, they could be they could be like you know basically ruling it as like who gets the crowd more hype. But I mean, are they producing their own tracks and spinning their own tracks? Are they giving it? Credit I'm gonna to I'm gonna enter it and play a pre-recorded mix. I'm gonna play one of David Guetta's pre-recorded mix, <laughs> and I'm guaranteed <laughs> to win. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it. And then hell, you probably have some rap artist uh, hit you up too. I'll get Flo Rider to rap over my electro house set, and I guarantee it'll be a hit. It'll be like the new pop. <laughs> that's hilarious. What about your uh, positive outtake on the scene today? Um, that it's still there. It, it seemed to have started to die, you know, years ago, and now it's back, and that's really cool. Yeah, do you I think can... it had to do with like the the more choppier beats, like electro house and uh, um, the bass has got more aggressive, and it does has a lot to do with it. Um. A lot of people hate on dubstep. I think dubstep I'd credit a lot for bringing a lot of the scene back because half the scene is there now. Is these new all the new ravers? Oh. They're all there for dubstep, you know, they, and they get into other genres. But I think I got to credit dubstep with bringing a lot of the scene back, or at least in, in Atlanta, because other people that's in all the original genres. We all grew up and got jobs and quit going. <laughs> and, and then um, I guess it came back. I'm like, hey, this is kind of cool. Let's check it out, you know. Yeah, that is cool. It's a new scene, but it's the same scene at the same, you know. But it is different. It is. I mean, um, do you think that uh, do you think that you're an underground DJ? Uh, how do you define an underground DJ? <laughs> That's why I love like, as it's. I'm reality. playing at ground level. I think at you ground know? level. Yeah, I'm a ground level DJ. I'm not really. Do you, you know? just mainly play at like uh, like uh, like underground parties? You know. Well, I guess, I, I, pl- I guess you could call like all the music I play underground. I'm not, I don't. I'm not, pl- I'm not going to rave parties and playing top forty and, and like radio, electro, pop, whatever. So. Yeah. You call it underground music, but I do mobile DJ gigs too, and that's not underground. You're playing like, so you, you know, do like Milli Vanilli or whatnot. Oh yeah, <laughs> to make ends meet, or you just love doing it? Do it um, free? No, I, I don't. I don't do the mobile DJ because it's super fun. It's just it, the money's not bad and it's easy. I own a sound system. You show up, play the list they gave you. You know, yeah. smile. You know, talk a little bit. Yeah, call some people out. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. You know, then take take a check, pack up, and go home. You know, it's a good night, free party. <laughs> Yeah, I actually do that as well. I played some places past weekend, and it's funny, you know. You get those fifty-year-old dudes in there, you know, that's uh, just jamming out, to and they want to hear like the brand new Britney Spears. Like, <laughs> yeah, the people, these people give you the weirdest requests, and this dude will be dancing like crazy to it. Like, <laughs> I mean, I love everybody, love every genre, gay, straight, green, red, right. I don't care what the hell you are, but you know, I mean, it's funny. This guy's probably straight as an arrow with a cowboy hat on, and he's asking for Lady Gaga. Yeah, literally, you know? that happens. You're like, really? <laughs> I love it. Um, I try not to make fun of them for those requests. I'm pretty polite. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I have any of that. And I usually don't even have Lady Gaga to play. <laughs> but some, I, I, when mobile DJs, you try to have like all the music they want. Yeah. I don't have it. If I have a Wi-Fi connection, I might play it off YouTube if you're lucky. But I was like, <laughs> I don't really care. That, I don't want to hear that. You know, you really got to tip me to play Lady Gaga though. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you know. I'd, um, if you see our head start sweating a little bit, hopefully the definition on the video is a lot better. We actually. Um, our air conditioner broke today in this facility that we're in, and uh, <laughs> it's really funny. We have like seven 120-watt bulbs beaming on us in an airtight space, and there's no air circulation, so 
It will be crazy, and I know I'll have to stop people to try to take their clothes off probably. I'd take uh, my shirt off, but we'd probably <laughs> lose viewers. So. <laughs> it's okay. You could have like a tattoo that says like P-Funk or something. I, I might have one there. It's a mystery. <laughs> you never know. You have any tattoos? I actually don't have no tattoos. Huh? Clean skin, brother. I like that. A lot better than the last guy. I mean, he's clean skin, but I like his attitude. It's fun. He's not on uh, Jesus' sidekick like the last guy, but I love him to death. He was neat. Very, very neat. Neat guy. Very nice. Very nice. I couldn't get him to break his edge, though, but uh, still loved it, though. Great, great selection of music. Uh, I would call him more of a CJ, but uh, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, is there anything you, uh, uh, upcoming shows or events you want to lay out there before we start the uh, crazy questions? Upcoming events. I'm going to, um, the 24th, I'm playing um, Keenan's party, the, the, the Bikinis and Blood at the Quad, right. the Sweet Tooth's party. Um, I'm playing the DJ contest out back. Um, I'll probably lose to some d- dubstep DJ that's been playing for like six months. But I, I will lose <laughs> gracefully, though. They'll be like, no, wait, 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 the Hercules controller? I, I don't know. I've seen one of those little controllers, and I was like, hey, I can fit that in my backpack. Maybe I'll buy one. You gotta just, might as well just use a computer. I mean, you know? Well, the thing is with a controller, if I'm using a controller, it has to have a spinning platter so I can scratch for real. Kind of mm-hmm. like the... Um, NS7s. I think that's it. The new marks with the... Yeah, cause, I mean, you can, like, though. scratch with them, but it doesn't actually have a spinner on it. It's not really, like, scratching. And that would be fun. It's yeah. like, the only reason I didn't want to use turntables anymore is to scratch. I mean, besides that, it's like, yeah, I don't want to pull all the pitch heavy fa- shit. I, I pull pitch faders for years. I'm over it, you know? I know. I mean, so, we, we, we like to work it's out, all good. Though, you know? I mean, yeah. We it, might want to carry I, that You shit. burn half a calorie by sliding that little fader, you know, on the turntable. Let <laughs> <laughs> me uh, squeeze more, uh, one more serious question in there all right. for you. Oh, then the crazy ones. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting if 9.50. We, crazy, we'll do, you know, yeah. we get the crazy questions. And I'm always trying to incorporate the uh, DJs and some of them, some of their mind thoughts, you know? Uh-oh. Don't die on me, brother. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Get some of that liquid goodness there for you. <laughs> if you were the biggest DJ in the world, how would you live and spend your money? Oh, I would probably be playing a lot of gigs. I'd just party at a different gig every night. You know, everybody <laughs> those huge DJs like every weekend they're playing like some show. I'm like, does it get old living in a hotel half the year? Yeah. I don't know. I would guess I'd just be partying like hell, you know. Let's hope I don't drink myself to death or something, you know. <laughs> you got you got to stay in the level, do do some good mixes, you know. Like with DJing, you got to take it seriously and like play a good mix. But if I was a huge DJ, how would I live? I mean, hotel to hotel, city to city, you know, trying to not to spend all my loot that I was making. <laughs> I was like, what do you think it means to be a DJ? Um, press sync. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, oh shit. <laughs> You gotta you you gotta throw your hands in the air a lot while you're DJing. You gotta um, I don't I don't know. It's hard to find that. Um, everyone will say, man, if you can't pull a pitch fader, you're not a DJ and all that. At the same time, it's what you're bringing to the crowd, wh- how what they're hearing. <laughs> so um, it depends. There's shitty DJs of software. Pressing sync doesn't make you good. Yeah. I mean, what, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What does it mean to be a DJ? It means to be a complete badass. <laughs> it means like Chuck Norris is afraid of you. You're a motherfucking DJ. <laughs> I love it. I don't even have a button for that. I love it. That's kick ass. Okay, now it looks like it's time for the crazy questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you know that basically the way this works, I throw a bunch of crazy off the wall, just fucking wild questions at this guy, and uh, he bends them and puts them in his own little fantasy world and uh, answers them. It's about getting to that personality of the DJ and learning a little bit more about him. And uh, here we go. So, uh, let's say this. Um, now, do you think that it is a myth that DJs, the bigger they get, the more they become wild and hide their true thoughts from life? Myth or not? And explain. Well, then there's a lot of variables that go into that question now. Okay. I'd say um, probably not mostly true. People, you know, get big or something like that, you know. Sometimes they want, you know, their heads will get big and exposure might change someone's perceptive and, the, and their actions. But I would say that's true to everybody. It depends on the individual's integrity, Yeah. I true. think. W- would, uh, you know, it had to really put down the individual. It's hard to generalize that. Yeah. So, yeah, it comes down to individual's integrity, I guess. So would you say a myth or not? Um, it is a myth, right? Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. I don't want to say double, double negative or anything. <laughs> repeat the question. <laughs> it is or it is. Whatever goes with my statement. 
I love it. Okay, now we're gonna do that ladder question. Basically, this little ladder question that I created for everybody here, just to let you know, that it's a series of questions that end up uh, for one big answer at the end. So basically, let's start off here. What is your dream equipment? If you had all the money in the world, what would you go out and buy for your dream equipment or create it yourself? Um, yeah, I'd probably buy that one badass controller that costs like $900 yeah. with the spinning platters and, and a freaking huge wall of sound. Oh, my gosh. I'd get a big sound system and um, I guess I'm a, a, whole, a whole studio. Good Lord. I mean, I'd just go to Guitar Center and go nuts. <laughs> have naked women just open they up the door they would for you. love me i would be ma whoever did my sales i'd be like dude you're cutting the commission on this with me because you know you're balling off this shit <laughs> i mean all right i love lot. it so now we're gonna take your dream equipment and we're gonna put it in two of these four parties are you ready all right i gotta pick two of the four parties yes all right I and then we gotta combine them together oh hey, right. a futuristic party with only body pain and it takes place in your ex's house. B, a field rave battle with only a grand prize of $20. That's sad. C, a party at your parents' house, but everyone has to be um, naked and bring an exotic pet. D, an eight-foot crazy foam party in a casino with monster trucks. What was B? <laughs> B, a field rave battle with only a grand prize of $20. Oh, we're going to combine um, B and D. B and D. So you have a field rave with a $20 head-up prize there. And D, an 8-foot foam party and a casino with monster trucks. Why do you pick these two? Because I don't want to have a party at my ex's house, and I don't think I'd want to do it at my mom. My mom would be pretty pissed if I like had a party at her house with exotic animals. <laughs> now, I want to come back next Christmas. Wow! Let's go get it wild. Yeah, yeah. never miss it. It's the animals I'm worried about. <laughs> it would be farm. It would be fun, but she doesn't live on a farm, so it just it wouldn't work. No animals. No, no. We'll, ha we'll have uh, enough party animals there. Okay. Any wild <laughs> ones. So we're combining the field and the casino and monster trucks. All right. Now well, for the third part of the question is this. As you are DJing, what would be three untamed, risky things that you would wish to see by the end of your two-hour set? All right, all those girls with the ass hanging out. You, you <laughs> gotta, go ahead and just show us your titties while you're at it, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not like a creep or anything, but I mean, you're already halfway there. Okay, so we have the women. Yeah, go ahead and just take the rest out. Like, Remember, we're Take your bikini off, you field? know, your, your G-string, your, you know. <laughs> Monster trucks and in a casino, and, they could sp and I think it's filled with eight foot of foam. That so what would be, be the other fun. two crazy things that you would see? In, in the foam pit? I'd have to hit jackpot at the casino. <laughs> While DJing at the same time, you know. <laughs> I, have, I bring the slot machines to the DJ booth, you know, be throwing quarters in. I have a groupie since I'm a big DJ at that point. <laughs> if Put you, quarters in for me and just, and just pull the slots till I win. So if, what would you do if you won? Would you make it rain and all the um, yeah I, all the quarters spots? that come out? I just I pelt them with quarters. I would what what is it called? When you throw money at it. It's not making it rain. It's making it hail. Yes. <laughs> I think Tosh when I said that, but um, yeah, I'd make it hail. So we have a lot of <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Ah. Well, winning some money, we got pretty much everything going on so far. So, what would be the third thing that you would see? Um, if I was teaching this awesome foam party, um, oh, man, monster just trucks. dancing. Oh, mo yeah, that big old monster truck, the dragon one that rips cars apart. That's like come <laughs> to the roof of the casino and like just tear through the roof of the casino. That's it, you know. I'm like, Rawr, I'm a fire breathing, you know, machine car dragon thing. You know what I'm talking about, though? <laughs> though, like, like the dragon car that ripped the others apart. So we need awesome. that thing. So we got ass chicken ladies. You winning a bunch of money and a fucking fire breathing car ripping through the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that no one would ever forget that party. <laughs> wow. I will definitely give it a little bit of wow. <laughs> that is badass. That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. If anybody could ever create that, I will be there. <laughs> Just give me a heads up before the car crashes through the ceiling because I do not want to get my balls burnt off. That would suck. <laughs> Okay, now, what would get you so damn excited that you would rip your clothes off and burn those sons of bitches? I think someone spiked my drink. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, um, 
Uh, <laughs> whatever they put, whatever they put in my drink is what it took. Because here I am running around, we took my clothes off, um, try, trying to burn them. Was that it on fire? Yeah. Yeah, trying to set my clothes on fire. Um, yeah, they definitely spiked me. That's, I don't know what they give me. You tell me what they gave me, and that's what it takes. So probably they probably even gave you a roofanol, a bunch of roofanol, some they, aginochrome. Yeah, maybe some aginochrome, <laughs> and maybe you know you stepped into a uh, tiki torch. You had a little bit of uh, lighting on you. Tried to light a fucking uh, torch, or I mean, you tried to light a cigarette, and you had some of that fluid on you. And that wouldn't you be go. good. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. That sounds like I'd like to see a DJ do that. Actually, that sounds pretty entertaining. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> All right, now <laughs> you as a DJ. Um, either you are a friend, since 10 years or so you've been DJing, what's a crazy, just off-the-wall wild story you could tell everybody of the years that you've been DJing or a friend you've known being DJing that you can tell the listeners out there, just a wild, crazy, off-the-wall party story? Um, my first time ever playing out live. <laughs> I remember I, I've been playing for maybe like four months, and um, I probably train wrecked every other mix. It was just terrible. <laughs> I don't know why they even booked me. This was years ago. But uh, what's a wild, ago. crazy? Oh, well, that was, that, that's an embarrassing story. A wild, crazy story. Man, nothing ever excited ever happens. You know, let me think. A <laughs> wild, crazy story. We uh, almost got robbed once outside of a venue. We, we, we didn't, though, so we were glad not to have. <laughs> How'd um, this happen? Were you just walking down the street? and you just We're got... walking some kids through a parking lot, and this little kid looks like he's like maybe 9 or 10 comes out, and he's walking with us. We know there's a pistol in his hand like that. He's like, y'all want some? We're like, no, we're straight, we're straight. And he gets in a car, and his driver takes takes off. And, uh, well, oh, shit, what the hell happened? We walk around the corner, and these kids are all ducked in their car still. Like, what happened? We just got robbed, man, by that kid. He came to our car. Literally, this he was like a kid with a fucking gun. I mean, how old did he look? Like, 12? Yeah, I mean, at most. It was, like, right up there, right across the Atlanta, um, the, the Pullen County Ple- um, Jail, by where Studio Central used to be. It was right there off of Mo- Memorial Drive, I think. Anybody call the cops? No, I don't think those kids did or not. I don't know. We were like, that sucks. Well, we we kind of dipped. You know, we're going to stick around and get robbed. <laughs> this isn't a nice place. A good parking lot to be in, apparently. So he did have a gun. Um, Yeah, unless it was a toy gun. It sure looked real in his hand. We weren't going to question him, you know. He could have <laughs> been bullshit. It was a cap gun. He's like, I robbed them. Crazy kids with a cap gun, yo. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> just throw them all your money and just be like, all right. I remember that face. It looked like it was my neighbor's face. I'll just right. kick your ass when I get home. The little kid on the school bus. So you little punk ass. <laughs> probably got raped when he got home by his father. <laughs> that was probably the driver. We need money. But go rob someone, kid. I've done it too much. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, now. Now, let's see how big your passion is here. Let's say that you just locked, lost your legs due to a uh, club burning down because of a speak, uh, shitty speaker setup. First, would you keep on DJing? Second, would you get more sex being a no leg DJ? Um, more sex as a no leg DJ. Um, maybe I. Um, <laughs> who knows? I'd have to become one of those like oddity porn stars, you know, like the no legged man. Watch how he does it. <laughs> I don't know. Really, oh, well, I keep DJing. Well, I guess I don't need legs to DJ, right? Just you know, roll me on up to the DJ booth. <laughs> I, I could even pull a pitch fader as long as I got my hands, right? Yeah, that's true. Use your tongue and shit. Maybe that's all I would do. I'd get my turntables back out of the closet, you know, and get start a scratching a lot. No. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was fun getting to P-Funk's mind right there. That's what it's all about, getting to that mind, getting that one-on-one connection feel there. But just to let you know, he probably has a crazy personal life, so try not to hit me up with too many crazy questions. You know what? Fuck it. Bring them on. Give me some crazy questions in there. I don't care where they yeah, come from, ask how me you want to say something crazy. You it might, doesn't you might matter. Answer. Remember, you got to join the crowd to become that party and chat there. Um, and you, you're welcome to chat anything you want to on that crowd as well. We're getting ready to throw down for that DJ set right now. So uh, make sure you uh, do something for your little one-minute break here. We'll leave yourself your fluids, drink a little bit of alcohol, mow some grass, whatever you need to do. Uh, it does not bother me. And I will see you here in about one minute. Enjoy. Woo! <laughs> Did fantastic there. 
like that. I like, I like bringing you into my fantasy world of craziness. <laughs> did very well there. It is. Yes, yes, she did. <laughs> you know the mic's on right now. That's why I wanted to think of watching the morning. Hold on one second. Here we go. About 30 seconds. We're going to refill all my enjoyments there. Oh, yeah. Everything queued up there, brother man. All right. Yeah. Can I hit it in the morning without giving you half of my dough? And even worse, if I was broke, would you want me? If I couldn't get you finer things like all of them diamond things, bitches kill for, would you still roll? If we couldn't see the sun rising off the shore of Thailand, would you ride then? If I wasn't driving, if I wasn't an eight-figure nigga by the name of Jigga, would you come around me and would you clown me? If I couldn't flow futuristic, would you put your two lips on my wood and kiss it? Could you see yourself with a nigga working harder than nine to five? Get a ten to six, two jobs to survive for Shopping to the mall, love, uh, brag, tell your friends what I bought ya If you couldn't see yourself with a nigga when this dough is no baby girl, if this is so Yo, can I get a fuck you to the bitches from all of my niggas who don't love hoes, they get no dough Can I get a hoo these niggas from all of my bitches who don't got love, and it's without love
shadiest one in the clip. Who wanna see me as I swap my old stone in my khaki thing? What's I got a gang, got a gang, ding, ding, ding. Run away, run away, you mess around and get faded by the stage. Never come to be for that thing, ain't no hiding it. I'll connect the circle and play, which means I can care less about you cowards in the trap game. Flashy fools can't hold up.
break it down for you. Break it down.
ain't swacking it with Leoshi Cause she don't know me, but yo, she's really fine You know I see her all the time, maybe where I go Even in my dreams, I can scheme a ways to make her mine Cause I know she's living fat Her boyfriend's tall and he plays ball So how am I gonna compete with that? Cause when it comes to playing basketball I'm always last to be picked and in some cases never picked at all So I just lean up on the wall Or sit up in the bleachers with the rest of the girls who came to watch they man ball Tag y'all, I never understood black While the jocks get the fly girls and me I get the hood rap I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call her Wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six more partner I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call her Wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six more partner I fell asleep beneath the baby, I fell asleep beneath the flowers For a couple of hours
still Let me move some things around because the lyrics is ill Abstract, you know my sticky D in here yeah. Niggas get on and swear and stay fucking near yeah. yeah. But yo, your girl just move to the joint in the club in the car for proof uh. Bruh, look, the movement is on Now I'm in it, mommies and Victoria dogs uh. I get my rhyme on guts, guaranteed to make it right if your night is a bust yeah. Come on, come on. Rap is steady, slow, finding it very hard to make it over the wall. Hey, get your weight up, I'm out of your hurt. And I'm gonna death be it's a felonious word. Uh.
off, the crush grooving, the body moving, the record making, and the record breaking. And it goes a little something like this. To come on, and come on, 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 to come on, and come on. y'all enjoyed the set oh yeah that's what it's all about we got the little banner up there right now we got about 30 more 30 more seconds here then after that 30 seconds then uh we're gonna do a little five minute just a little five minute conclusion there uh, everybody's been enjoying themselves we partied our ass off here that's what it's all about Woo! mad yeah. props out there to germany russia uh morocco um no well yeah i did australia so morocco as well morocco yeah They've had mad, mad uh, talkings about my show the last past couple weeks, and that's what it's all about. Up to 80 people, 80 people that watch the show today. We have a couple comments in there, a couple of uh, live comments to uh, ask the DJ, and we're going to get those out here in one second. We're all sweating our balls off in here. Only one person took the clothes off. <laughs> what a shame. I almost did. I, I wish the did. DJ could have. Oh, yeah, baby. No, I'm just fucking with maybe, maybe next time, you know? <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> Shove my Speedos. <laughs> just don't do a pee Herman and pee on my shit. I'm bringing the lime green speedos. <laughs> All right, here in about ten seconds, we're gonna go ahead and uh, show everybody. Thank you about watching the Matt Black show. Holy shit, I lost my hat. <laughs> it's behind you. Well, that works. That works. 
Either the Viking boner on my head or the uh, actual hat. Either one works, covers up my fucking baldness because I'm about to hit 30. Fuck them all. But um, how old are you? I actually am 30. I've hit that, I've bridged that gap, and um, yeah, I'm old. Might have to come to you for some advice how to handle that. Um, You'll start getting fat. <laughs> I, I, I was scrawny for like years. I'm so, I was so freaking scrawny, and um, I'm pushing, I'm. I probably passed 200. I was 199 and a half last week. Oh, shit. Yeah, and I, I was like, I was a small, skinny guy. You no, know, if and I'm I did fat the Matt now. Black Show workout video, would you buy it? Um, totally. Just yeah, stay it, in this room for two hours, you would lose like 200 pounds. I, you know what? I'm not leaving tonight. I'm not leaving until I sweat off about 40 pounds and get to my target <laughs> weight. People don't realize Turn the, the air AC conditioning up. is broken and 720 watt, watt bulbs is beaming in on our face. It sucks. It's all it like really is hot in here. <laughs> You thought it was just the music. Why is there a backup guy to fix air conditioning? Nah, fuck it. Anyways, um, yeah, mad props to everybody over there. Overseas, that's what I'm talking about. Hit up the fan page on Facebook, uh, the Matt Black Show, because uh, when you hit it up there, I have a decoder, and also I know about three different languages as well, and um, I can go ahead and chat back and forth with you guys overseas. I know any language. Just uh, throw it at me. I'll, I'll get it figured out. But the three languages I know is Polish, uh, Ukrainian, and a little bit of Russian. So. But Germany, yeah, mad props out to you out there. For uh, getting my name out there and um, just mad love. That's what it's all about. Everybody else oversees, even the London Cats and uh, Netherlands as well. So I stayed in the Netherlands for three years. Uh, how about you? Any shout-outs you want to give out there? Um, shout-outs to everybody that tuned in tonight. Um, even if you didn't enjoy it, still, shout-out for tuning in. I'm sure you did like it, though. Shout-out to everyone that likes the music that I'm playing. Shout-out to GhettoFunkRecords.co.uk. Check them out. Um, Shout out to all the artists, all the DJs, um, everyone that's cool. Shout out to you. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. Sh shout outs to everyone, you know. Y you've been shouted out. <laughs> shout, shout, shout it out. Boom. And there we go. And uh, I think we had like a, a guest back here. Some mad props out to the guest. The dancing girl. We always give mad props out to her. She's always hot, keeping it going. So is the guest, you know, mad props. That's what it's all about. Sexy ladies, DJs, getting it wild, enjoying yourself, liquid curls, too much mowing the grass. It doesn't fucking matter. Just enjoy yourself every Monday at 9.30. Check it morning. out. If you don't, then fuck. Have sex. Do something. And uh, there you go. Enjoy uh, next week. I don't know. I can't remember who I have next week. Do you know? Silk Wolf. Ooh, yeah, All that's right. right. Next Silk week Wolf. we have Silk Wolf. Silk Wolf in the house. <laughs> Basically, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a thunder scene, and uh, it's going to be really dark and nasty. I tried to get a jello pit and have two girls wrestling in a jello pit for this because it's going to be like industrial fucking sexy, dark, rip your fucking eyes out kind of music. But that's what we like. You know, you like having sex to like Nine Inch Nails and that kind of shit. If you do, pay attention next week because you're not going to go wrong with that. Thank you so much for watching the Matt Black Show, and good night. <laughs>